is that we all do our work together for 20 minutes and then we do the dialogue of the show and that's you asking me questions about your work and your creative process. Um, what we don't have time for is we don't have time to like have you guys read specific works or anything and have me comment on them, but we do have time to talk about process in a way to keep everybody in the loop and energized, especially going into this holiday weekend. And so if you guys have questions, um, Audrey's going to tell you how to get in touch. Yeah. Thanks, SLP. So if you have questions and you're inside of the Zoom, all you need to do is click on the raise your hand button at the bottom of uh, your Wow, I messed up my speech. The participant tab, it's inside of the participant tab, likely at the bottom of your screen on a laptop or on the top of your on an iPad or a tablet. Um, and if you're watching on HowlRound.tv, you can tweet at us at, at WatchMeWorkSLP with the hashtag HowlRound, H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. Or you can tweet at the Public Theater's Twitter, which is at Public Theater NY, or you can write to the Public Theater's Instagram. All right, all right, so here we are. The small containers of Tupperware will be good for the sorbet. Yes, important decisions like that be made every day. <laughs> okay, here we go. 20 minutes, everybody ready?
All right. All right. Okay. Okay. Here we are. Here we are. It's Thursday, and it's a holiday weekend. So, if you got sure. questions, you know, because <laughs> we're not going to be here on Monday because it's a holiday. That's right. Um, we've got a question. It's from Emery. Hey, Emery. Hi. How are you? Hey, Emery. So, something the last time. I chatted with you on here. You, we talked about a little bit about the bad first draft, which I love and I love the idea of it and I want to love it so badly, but unfortunately <laughs> I just don't love it yet. And I feel like I'm like, especially today, like I just, like I just so in my head and so like just thinking, thinking, thinking so much about what I'm putting on the page. And ultimately like I want to like, just throw myself into it and like do it i'm writing a play right now um and and i know that the bad first draft might turn into a better second draft and so on and so on but it's so hard for me to like think past that and like get out of my head so i wanted to i don't really know what my i guess my question is just how do you like get past yourself sometimes when you're when you're stuck with yourself yeah that's a great question, Emery. And it's like, I'm always like every day I'm asking myself that question. You know, most of the time it's like running, screaming down the down the road. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. to get past myself. I like, you know, <laughs> sometimes you just got to like take off at a like, ah, I'm going to run really fast. I mean, write really fast. That helps. Sometimes you have to like trick yourself, you know, like hypnotize yourself, um, meaning Meaning, you know, say a lot of mantras like it's okay. I'm, I'm just going to write for five minutes. I'm just going to write a scene. I'm just going to write um, a page. I'm just going to write a half a page. Inch along, you know, cr as if you're trying to es escape from a dungeon. Creep along. You know, you don't want to call, you don't want to draw attention to yourself. You know, um, underneath all this, maybe you can tell, is to keep a light heart. You know what I mean? I mean, it's not, and it's not at all to, to dismiss the importance of what you're writing, but you keep like a light heart, about, a playful heart, a playful heart is, will come in handy, you know? So you can laugh at yourself. Look at me in my way again. Shit, get out the way, girl. You know, you can, you can have fun with it. Um, I also get out of your, you know, you said you're in your head a lot. I would say get in your body more. You know, not to say you're not in your body, but get in your body more. Maybe um, I don't have my little step stool handy. It's over there. But anyway, put a step, you know, put a little box on your desk. Maybe try doing the standing desk, you know, if you don't do that already. Get out, you know, maybe act out your characters. You know, again, the timer is invaluable. If you're going to write like 10 minutes at a pop, you know, I was. Um, so, oh. This, this is my little thing I was playing with today. It's a harmonica, right? It's a harmonica. It's a chromatic, I saw that. <laughs> chromatic harmonica, right? And I play the harmonica. Um, I don't play the chromatic harmonica as well as I want to. So I was like doing like, you know, you know, like 30 seconds of harmonica playing, you know, or one minute or whatever it was. I would play a phrase that I was trying, I'm trying to learn. And then I'd put it down and I'd write for, you know, whatever, five minutes. It's practical for me because I'm resting my mouth because it takes a lot of, you know? Um, but if you want to write for five minutes and put it down, come back to it. You know, maybe you have, I don't know what your time is during the day, but if you have like, like maybe two hours of writing time, do you have that? To, yeah. Have, okay. That's two usually hours. about my window. Yeah. Two hours. That's great. So you can actually say, I'll write for 10 minutes and then I'll take a, a dance break, turn on my favorite song. And like, I don't know if you'd like to dance. I do. I do <laughs> right. dance around, you know, it doesn't have to be your favorite, same song every time, you know, then I'll write for five minutes and I'll like, I don't know, sweep the floor. That's always good. Clean the, clean the toilet. I always end up cleaning. When I'm no, but you, but you do it at in time break. So you're not, like procrastinating per se, you're not going to get lost in the cleaning of your home. Right. 
You're going to do it for a certain amount of time. Beep, beep, five minutes, timer goes off, and oh, you've just cleaned your bathroom bowl. Yay for you. And then you go back and you write for 10 more minutes. It's, it's like cross training, you know? Yeah. It's tricking your mind to think, nothing's going on, man. Don't worry about it. I'm not writing. I'm just <laughs> typing. But yeah. yeah, but see, but also you're laughing. Good. That's good. That's good. Laughing is good. Keep it, keep it fun, you know? And Thank keep you. coming back here because we're full of, we're full of yes, fun. Yes, this is the best. Thank you so much. I appreciate Thanks, it. Marie. Thank you. Thank you, Marie. Oh, I clicked the button again by accident. I'm so sorry. Um, I actually don't have any questions at the moment unless I'm looking at, yep, we don't. Oh, we got one. Oh. Sandy. Sandy. Hey there. there. Hi. Um, I was wondering if you have, like, do you ever run into the issue of feeling discouraged? So this is probably my first time writing my own play, and I feel like I keep running into this issue where I start feeling self-conscious about my own writing mm -hmm. and wondering, oh, is this getting kind of corny? Like, is this getting, you know, am I working too hard with a sort of expert expectation that this is going to be received positively or negatively? So when you write, do you write for the sake of creating this work or, you know, how do you do you let that idea of like reception affect your writing at all? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is great. So Sandy, you said, great question, Sandy, first of all, you said this is the first time you're writing a play for your writing your own. What do you mean writing? Try, 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 unpack that for me just a little bit okay. more. So I am writing a solo performance play. So it's uh -huh. literally going to be about myself and it's for okay. um, my undergraduate like theater major kind of deal mm -hmm. um and so I'm putting on this one woman show and I've seen a couple of these done really really well by my peers mm -hmm. and so I sort of feel like there is a standard that I'm living up to and I'm also sort of afraid of do, like of of being cliche and oversharing <laughs> almost mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm because like this play is so personal to me and you know I will be performing it myself I just keep having this idea of like oh gosh like what if somebody comes to see it and they think it's really bad or mm -hmm. they come mm -hmm. to see it and think oh she's you know she's full of herself like this is so narcissistic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well I you know theater artist so I guess they're well, kind of right <laughs> well well yeah, I think I think well the first thing I think you're allowed to be full of yourself I mean, that just means that you're alive, right? It's okay to be full of yourself. I would just add, as long as you are also aware and very, very aware of the presence of other people and other beings and other things, you know? And that's called having strong character, right? I mean, think of like, I don't know, I don't know if you admire him, but say President Barack Obama, you know? I would say he's full of himself, sure. I mean, <laughs> Yo, he's a black man. He, I'm going to be president. You know, he's full of himself. But he's also very aware of the presence of others mm -hmm. and, other, and other creatures and other things, other trees and things like that. You know what I mean? So it's okay. No more, it's okay to be full of yourself. Um, uh, to think about what people are going to think about your work when you do it is a hu is, sounds like that's sort of the big boulder in the way making it difficult for you to go forward. Mm -hmm. um, it's a valid thing to think about at the right time, right? Like maybe the, the, after you've done opening night and you're getting reviews or when you're in previews and you're putting it in front of an audience, right? Yeah. But I, 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 I know for sure that to concern yourself with that now is is not the right thing to do because it's getting in the way of you doing your work right mm -hmm. so what we have to do is we have to uh give you again just like we did a second ago give you some tools to trick yourself or to occupy the the gatekeeper the bouncer the sensor whatever you want to call them the police you know so they're looking the other way as you creep by yeah. or walk proudly by right 
So mantras are really good, like affirmations, like this is good. It might not be great right now, but when I write it down, I can make it better. Just any positive affirming thing you can think to say to yourself. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's, that, that's an old trick saying affirmations. Also, again, using the timer, like we just talked about, mm-hmm. if you work in small increments, then the sensor might not catch on that anything's happening. Right. Yeah. You know, it, 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 like if you were in jail and you were escaping and you were digging with a spoon, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just, dig- I'm just making a hole with a spoon, you know, right. So they don't even think anything's going on. And yet you are making slow and steady progress. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, having supportive people around. So keep showing up to places like watch me work. And I'm sure there are hundreds and hundreds of other places that are supportive and encouraging to your work. Right. Um, also writing quickly sometimes is very helpful for me. Okay. If I'm, if I'm all, you know, feeling agitated, I write, just, let me just type for 10 minutes, just anything, just go, 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 go. So you run past the sensor or the guard keeper, the gatekeeper or the police, just out sprint them. Nothing works as good as showing up every day. Right. So you're just going to, sh- you're just going to say like the sensor's like, Oh, I bet you're scared, Sandy. And you're like, yeah, so what I'm here. Oh, Sandy, you know, you don't know what those people are going to think of your show. I, 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 you're right. I don't know what they're going to think of my show. I'm here. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Just keep showing up and the sensors will, yeah, either they'll keep talking to you or not or whatever. You can incorporate what they say into your play. That's also a good technique. Um, keep showing up and keep doing your work, keep writing, regardless of your feelings of anxiety. Sounds crazy, but you think, I've got to get over my anxiety before I'm able to work. But actually, one does help move the other one along. Does that, does that at all make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you okay. so much. And keep coming back here and keep checking in. We're here. We're, we're here to cheer you on. Ooh. Okay. What else do we have to do? Nothing better. <laughs> Thanks, Sandy. Um, all right. Up next, we've got Laura. Laura, are you there? Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Thanks. Hi. Hi there. Hey, Laura. Um, so, so I'm working on this memoir and, you know, sometimes the writing goes great, goes really well. And then there, like, there are certain sections where when I first started it, I started it a while ago. Mm-hmm. it it was just kind of pedantic mm-hmm. and I've tried to work it and rework it and I still think that certain sections are pedantic it's like you know sometimes like you get into a a mode when you're writing and you know it's good you know you're on the right track mm-hmm. um and then those sections are easier to edit mm-hmm. and improve um but like the certain sections, you just go, you go, ugh. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you find in your process that if you've had problems with a, a section of something, um, that sometimes it's easier just to chuck the whole thing and start all over? <laughs> or, or do you just keep editing until you get it? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Um, you mean chuck the whole thing, like chuck the whole memoir out? No, 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 oh, no. Oh. Just, just the problem spots where no matter what you seem to do, mm-hmm. you know, you, you didn't have a good day when you started it. Mm-hmm. And, and no matter how much you seem to edit it, it just doesn't seem to click mm-hmm. or, or be real, you know, real mm-hmm. enough or mm-hmm. speak enough. Uh huh. Have you printed out? Have you gotten to the end of the of the manuscript? I have. I've still got to fill in holes. Okay. And I have I have printed it out, but I haven't printed it out recently. Okay. Because it could. Uh, I mean, I'm assuming that you have paper and a printer. I mean, I don't, yeah. which is why I don't have a printer here. So, but it's nice to print it out, right? To go through it and circle those parts that aren't working for you. Okay. You know. Um, and let it sit for a while, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, 
keep working on the parts that you can work on the things that you can work on. Mm -hmm. uh, for right now, we're going to be gentle and loving and just circle, just identify the parts that you can't really figure out right now. Right. Mm -hmm. And you're going to call in uh, divine intervention. Okay. So you're going to, when you look at those passages, you're going to say, I, I know I can figure this out, right? And I'm going to get some help. Fantastic. Right? right? You're just going to like pray on it. You know what I mean? Whatever yeah. your religious thing or orientation is, if you don't have it, you're just going to meditate on it. You're going to send good energy in the direction, in the positive direction. And it's not like you're just going to send good energy and then you're going to sit back and eat bonbons and watch, you know, the, uh, the dynasty reboot or whatever, you know what I'm saying? It's the first that came to mind. Oh, scary. But you're going to, but you're going to actively, you're going to think you're going to send good energy and show up every day at your desk, working diligently and lovingly on your manuscript and the parts that you don't have. Okay. Uh, if you see that part, it's circled maybe in, in a, mar a color highlighter that or marker that you like, mm -hmm. I would, you know, I mean, if you like red, great, but if you like, a, a color that suggests like it's cool you know i would suggest instead of a mistake color yeah you know, i yeah. would suggest like i don't i like pink you know i was gonna say hot pink yeah hot. perfect right <laughs> yeah hooray you circle it in pink and just say and then maybe you have an idea uh maybe fix this you know maybe work on this maybe this section needs extra love uh, whatever right and yeah. then you kind of go on and you work it because what happens is you give the work a chance to work on itself, which it yeah. does, right? If we give it some opportunity. Okay. See if that, see if that works. If not, come back and we'll think of something else. Fantastic. Thanks okay. so much. You're welcome so much. Thanks, Laura. Um, all right. Up next, you've got Larry. Hi, hey, Larry. Um. Uh, first of all, thank you for your help the other day. Um, sure. You uh, gave me some momentum, so I appreciate that, some freedom. Um, I had a quick, my question as I was writing today was, I'm remembering that one of the frequent uh, feedback that I get when I share my work to get some feedback is that all the characters sound like me. Hmm. And I'm, uh, I'm like, well, yeah, um, funny story. Um, so uh, I guess I'm interested to hear on, you know, there's that other part of me, again, I sort of, I, I write things that I want to direct. That's because I have a director's head. So I'm writing basically to give myself something to direct. So I'm always thinking about, you know, I, how I can't wait to get this and with actors and to work with actors. I'm a social creature. So the isolation of writing is really hard. So I, I sort of always feel like they'll, they'll, They'll do that, you know, but, you know, I also don't want to um, overlook things I could be doing that help differentiate. So I guess I'm just wondering, particularly because you have, you have your own code and your own spelling and your own grammar, like you, you, you have a code, like a, a code that I, I can recognize as yours. And how do you have that individuality, that individual voice, but also give characters their individuality. I'm just wondering totally cool. how you respond to that. That's a great question, Larry. And I, um, I'm assuming that you, you, you do not want your characters to all sound like you. Is um, that... Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. Okay. And yeah, and that, that is a good, you're, that is a good point. You're, you're also a, a director and you direct a lot and you're writing so that you know you can can't wait to direct this which is really exciting it's a great feeling and you're right actors are going to bring themselves to the part uh the parts you know um but i really admire you for going yeah but you know i could do i, I might be able to do a little something before i i turn it loose on some actors um one thing that i like doing is doing the geometry you know in geometry that one of the uh, I guess uh, pro uh, truths, I guess, is two points make a line, you know, right? Two points make a line. And what I do is I apply it to dramatic writing. Two points make a line of dialogue. You take where the character is, 
right, where she is and where she wants to go. And those two points will inform what she says and how she says it, okay? To, and to get more specific on the how she says it or he says it, how they say it, think of their body. You know, some, some people are all in their head. You know, I don't know if you do funny voices, Larry, but I sure do. Some people are all in Some people are all like moving around, you know what I'm saying? Some people are moving all the time when they talk. That's a whole different rhythm and you wanna capture that rhythm and that the, the speech patterns in your writing um, makes it fun and it makes your characters sound different because they are different people. Does that make any kind of sense? I love that and you're actually speaking my language because it sort of feels like I'm, in a way I'm casting and staging the actors and sort of envisioning the thing I'm, the thing I'm already thinking they'll do later, I could actually be envisioning and incorporating. Uh, so that's great, that, that yes. really- Oh that, goody. Very helpful. Oh, good. And then, of course, Larry, on, on what I'm not saying, which I guess I'll just come clean on, then you can be more in control, you see. <laughs> you can weave in things to the, the line. You can put actions and beats into the lines of dialogue so you can be even more in control. Directors in control? What? And, and writers? I mean, really? <laughs> we only put words in people's mouths, but, yeah. you know. Right. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's really helpful. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Larry. Thanks, Larry. Um, all right, up next we've got Bob. Are you there? Hello, hello. Oh, shoot, I pressed the wrong button. Can you? Oh. oh. I'm here, hello. Hi. Um, I have a question um, about something you say a lot that I've sort of used is that, you know, always check in is what does my character want more than anything? Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, uh, two questions about that. One, I'm writing about a family right now. Uh, a mother, father, 15 year old, 10 year old. And the questions are for, I'm wondering if you think that applies to kids. You know, we, you know I'm kind of try, struggling with that because the kids aren't quite as directed and, and obsessive. And I'm wondering how you think that might work up being a child. And the other thing is the dad sort of, um, his big want is to keep the family together because, you know, mm -hmm. stuff's going on. And I'm just wondering on some level if that's, a good want like it's almost not really an active want i feel like it's not transformative or like it's, it's keeping something together do you feel like an effective strong dramatic want for someone and i guess he doesn't have to get what he wants either mm -hmm. um, those mm -hmm. are my, my two questions mm -hmm. i think those are great questions bob and uh, let's do the second one first the, the the if the dad character wants to keep the family together again like we were talking with i think it was was kim yesterday what is that going to look like you know what I mean? What will that look like for the dad? So keeping the family together for that dad character, does that mean that they're all going to stay in the ha all going to live in the house together? Does that mean that um, they're going to be able to go on those vacations that his wife always dreams about? You, do you see what I mean? I mean, I don't know the specifics, but keeping the family together. Uh, I mean, does that mean he's going to tie them all up in the basement? I mean, I, you know, that's not, um, but you see, it's, going to give you hints the desire of your character should be giving you hints as to their actions right so how is he trying to make that happen you know does he start to uh let's he realizes that keeping the family together uh it would be a lot easier to keep the family together if his wife were were, were thought he were attractive so he's now started to use you know product in his hair so you know i don't know what men do you know but you know there huh now i'm or wear cologne because he thinks you know whatever whatever it is that he thinks uh is you know the kids um keeping the family together might mean uh, sending the kids to that good school which would mean moving out of the neighborhood into another neighborhood that he can't really afford that now I, I, you see what i'm saying there are many things that that could make that a very active and beautiful character want and drive this character to all sorts of exciting choices and activities and actions. Uh, the thing about kids, um, I, I, I have an eight year old. What I know of children is that they sure do want things and they sure do grab at them and they're not called rugrats for nothing. So um, and I imagine it only intensifies, you know, to teenage years, I've heard are very 
can be very exciting. Um, I think kids, you know, they want friends, they want security, they want, you name it, they want to, I don't know, uh, all kinds of things. They want to drive the car, they want to be left alone, they want to win the game, you know what I'm saying? So kids, yeah. kids are full of delicious desires, you know? So I think you're in good, I think you're in good shape. And don't forget the, the other parent, is it a two-parent family? Mom and dad. Uh, uh, so, so remember, don't, don't, don't leave out mom. Moms want things. No. Moms want, want things. <laughs> okay. Great question. Thank, though. You. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. So we actually don't have any questions at the moment. I'm going to practice my posture. Ooh, I should do that more often. <laughs> yeah. See, we can all do it right now. Yes. Practice mm -hmm. posture. Oh, we got a question from Jacob. He did not want to see us practice our posture anymore. <laughs> Bye. You can keep practicing your posture. That's <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, my question is about like um, rewriting other people's work, which I know you've done. Uh, I, I, like I know you did Porgy and Bess. I don't know if you've done it other times, but I imagine. And like what? was your your approach and practice in that and and how did it differ and like how did you approach that idea mm -hmm. uh-huh uh-huh uh, so rewriting other people's work and i'm guessing because you cited porgy and best jacob i'm guessing you're talking about um like like uh not upgrading what was it? like adapting oh, an existing work kind of bringing it into the the future kind of thing or into the not business? necessarily like like so in this case i got hired to basically like script doctor or something right right, right. okay so it's okay. it's not a thing that like already exists i don't have to worry right. about like right right, 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 right. okay so right so script doctor and you've been given very you've been given um specific sort of parameters like they want you to depends on the project work on the dialogue file track these characters make sure that, 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 that whatever the, the job is okay which is great um i love to remember always what a good friend of mine um says he's a, like a high fancy fancy pants hollywood screenwriter type dude um he's like it's always easy to come in and do a rewrite first drafts that's where you really that's really really hard so to come in and do a rewrite to, to sort of have someone have already set, they've already set the table. We're coming in and going, Ooh, I think green place would be better than orange. Right. And, and if we move those glasses around, that's really gonna, right. Not to diminish the task of the rewriter. Right. But it's way. But, well, I would say, let us be respectful to the work that has been done before. Even if we don't know that person, even if down the line we might be in arbitration at the union to get credit, you know, or share credit with that person, you know what I mean? All kinds of things can happen, but we should come into it with a lot of respect. Someone worked really hard on a script. You know, they took it all the way up the hill and then some, and they didn't get it there for a variety of reasons. Sometimes the producers, their notes aren't as great as they could be. Sometimes the, the writer just runs out of time. Sometimes the writer just couldn't get their head around the notes. You know, there's lots of disconnects. Um, but uh, just, just have a lot of respect for the writer who came before. And I think that'll even make your job even easier, you know, um, because you go, okay, so how can I, how can I just take this to the next level, you know, along the guidelines of, of the people who have hired you that, that they've set out, right? Does that help at all? I mean, I've done a lot of that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's, it's you know, and yeah. when it's an adaptation of like, I did The Rise of Watching God or Porgy and Bess or Native Son or whatever, you really are holding the hand of the original writer, you know, in an appreciative and gracious and grateful way. They have laid the path, you know, so same kind of thing, just a little different. Makes sense. Cool, thank you. Thanks, Jacob. Um, all right, up next we've got Rebecca. Rebecca, we've got about 10 minutes left and it's all you. Thank you. Hi, Susan Laurie. Hey, Rebecca, how you doing? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? Oh, happy to see you, happy to hear you. Yeah, thanks. Um, so I, I've made good progress on, 
I, I'm calling it draft two and a half now. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I've sent it off uh, for just to begin the process of um, finding an agent and stuff. Um, but I still have these like two big sections and I have questions. So my, my process is kind of to start out here, mm -hmm. like in the universe, and then mm -hmm. either get very specific or to be very specific and then go broader. And, and because it's set in 1937 and it's about, and it's set in rural South, I just feel like there's a lot of stuff that people don't necessarily know. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to figure out at what point I just become pedantic and boring. And at what point, you know, like I have a whole section on cotton gins. <laughs> and, uh -huh. Oh, great. Yeah. And it's a little, and because I love like research and information, it's just like, mm -hmm. I love it, but I, it's a little hard for me to tell what other people know or need to know and, and how to, how to balance that. You know, the, the cotton gin is important for an individual, mm -hmm. um, but I think most people haven't even seen a cotton gin. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you know, it's, it's things like that. I have a couple of other places that I cut out because I was just going on too long. But this one, I just, um, um, that in some of the like history, how the history is working is still problematic mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. uh, in mm -hmm. the manuscript. Uh huh. Uh, okay. Um, that's a great question. And I, I mean, I would be right there with you reading about the cotton gin. That would be really super cool. Um, mm -hmm. Cool question. You said some people haven't even seen a cotton gin. Is there a possibility that you could include a drawing in your novel book? So I would love to do that. There's a couple of places where I'd like to have an illustration of some kind. Mm -hmm. um, having, I mean, if this was straight up history, that'd be great. And it's taking on a kind of multi-genre character anyways. Um, at this point, there's going to be a little poetry in it. So I, I'd love to have, especially a cotton gin from the 30s mm -hmm. is kind of this big fiery mess, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that would be really nice to include. That's cool. Yeah, pictures on, on pages where you think you're being pedantic or going on too long. That's always fun. Pick Draw, drawings or whatever mm -hmm. that could be fun um i'm guessing do you know the grapes of wrath the the novel mm -hmm. so you know the part where steinbeck just spends chapters just talking about basically the weather the dust oh, yeah you know that's yeah. like for me that's the novel mm. i mean i love the joes and all that and what they go through okay i'm with them but when he talks about the weather i'm like mm -hmm. <laughs> so because yeah. that's the that's you know the hand of God in a way for me in the novel you know that's mm. he's showing that he's showing me or he's looking at the hand of God um, so the, these parts of your novel um, I would say just make sure and it sounds like the cotton gin for example is connected to the life of a character very much a, an important part of the character right mm -hmm. um, so each historical or factual bit that you want to include, just make sure it's like, has so much to do with the character. Not that you have to mention the character in the mm -hmm. bit, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll come, because we go into the passage with no understanding and we come out of it with an understanding of the thing. And then we feel, wow, now I, I have a feeling about how this thing impacted this character. You see what okay. I mean? so make it add up yeah. to something it's really got to add up to something um does that make sense yeah, yeah it someone's, does someone's yeah. text chatting about yeah moby dick yeah the whiteness of the whale same thing you know melville yeah. goes on and on about the whiteness of the whale and you know beautiful passages oh my goodness mm -hmm. you know but mm -hmm. yeah yeah or oil making or things like that yeah definitely right. yeah does that make sense it does and you know it's it's non-fiction but of course I'm treating the the people I'm writing about as characters because mm -hmm. I mean one of them I never met so right. <laughs> I'm kind of right. making them up as I go along. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that that's helpful because that, that'll help with some other places where I want to go on longer, 
mm-hmm. and just am not sure what what the standard mm-hmm. um, is. And let me just say, when, whenever I'm just sort of thinking, maybe I'm going on too long or what's fascinating, I think of the the butcher's monologue, the list monologue is just like, yeah, that that yeah. is the perfect thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 So Thank you. you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, and we, you know, people are still saying, "Why is that there?" And I'm like, "Because it is." Exactly. <laughs> you know, because the man had to unburden himself, yeah. because the man was in love. The care we're talking about, the man uh, butcher felt uh, was in love, is in love, and he is sharing, and that's what fuels that speech about his daughter. Mm. So again, if you lash, if you like, you know, what was his name? Odysseus, you know, and they were going on that boat past the sirens, you know. I don't know if this analogy is going to work. Let's see. And he says to his crew members, lash me to the mast, tie me to the mast mm-hmm. so that I can make it through, right? You want to tie your, your information, the cotton gin, lash it to the character's desire mm-hmm. and it will go through, right? Mm-hmm. Right. If it's tied to that, it will resonate in a in a full and beautiful way, um, and a, and, a, and a drawing of a cotton gin could be kind of cool. Yeah. All right, I'll, I'll be sure that gets in the negotiation. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> you can draw one yourself. You can just draw one. You know. Right. Anyway, okay. All right. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Rebecca. Thanks, Rebecca. Thank you. Um, all right, we've got about a minute left, and we're going to go to Aaron. Aaron, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Susan Laurie. Hey, Aaron, how are you? Good, how are you? I've told so many people about um, HowlRound and what you're doing. And I have a friend who joined like a few weeks ago and she's on this Zoom call too. Yeah. Um, well, good news is I finished a really, well, I finished a draft of a screenplay okay. and it's really bad. <laughs> okay. But I'm gl- it's the first um, screenplay that I finished writing on my own. And um, I feel like a little overwhelmed at the prospect of rewriting it. And um, I'm primarily a director for um, like music videos and short form content and things like that. But I do wanna get into narrative features. Um, so I feel like I'm, my ideal situation is having maybe a co-writer to work with, but um, right now I'm trying to like push it along as far as I can. And just wondering if you have any suggestions or, <laughs> I feel yeah. like, cause I feel like I'm not a writer, I guess is like my hang up. Well, you're not a lot, well, Aaron, okay. Well, let's go. <laughs> you know, I love you and stop telling me you're not a writer. How can you not be a writer? You've written a whole screenplay. I mean, what more, what more proof do you need? All right. So if you, you've got to get in the habit of saying, yeah, I, I mean, I primarily direct, but I'm also a writer. You can couch it any way you want, but you're not allowed to say I'm not a writer. Cause that's a lie. And we don't lie here. Okay. Right. okay. We don't lie. All right. So what I would suggest, I mean, I co-writers, that's great. Um, and, but, but I want you to have the success for yourself, you know, <laughs> I, I want you to have the success for yourself. So uh, maybe, maybe when it gets picked up by, I don't know where Paramount or whatever, and you're like a, the 26 figure deal or whatever, <laughs> then they'll bring on a writer to do, you know, they'll bring on Jacob and he'll do his magic. You know what I mean? And boom, it's going to be a, a, a great screenplay, you know? Um, and you guys can share credit or fight over it with the WGA as you will. But I want you to have this experience for you. So yeah. if, if you say the screenplay is not so good, bad, okay? Yeah. Um, are you uh, familiar with the rhythm of a, it's a Hollywood screenplay, right? I mean, traditional kind of Hollywood style. Yeah. Okay, okay. Are you familiar with the traditional beats in a screenplay? Mm-hmm. Page one. Yeah something should happen or something specific page three page 10 page 30 you were familiar with that right yes page yeah 30, okay, okay great so you're going to rewrite in chunks okay you're going to rewrite page one okay spend a day on it i mean not a whole day but spend your writing time on page one then spend your writing time 
on pages one through three, making sure that the shit that needs to go down on page three is happening. Yeah. Then spend your writing time on pages one through 10. You, you, right? You're, you're, we're, yeah. taking it, we're taking it slow. Yeah, totally. Okay. It's like dating. You just take it slow. Right? Okay. Yeah. And then do the same thing. You go from uh, then page 30. So you go from page one to page 30. And again, I would say uh, spend more of your writing time on the pages that you haven't gotten to yet. So from page 10 to page 30, you want to really work on that. Make sure that the, the end of act one is where it should be. Right. Yeah. And then you're going to go through the middle and then you're going to from whatever 30 60 and then 65 65 75 75 90 90 to 120 or the end right gotcha. you want to work on it in pieces making sure the stuff that's supposed to happen in those pieces is happening got it okay, okay. cool thank you susan Lurie. thank you great question <laughs> yay yay all right. Oh. I muted myself. That was a mistake. I meant to mute Aaron. I muted myself. It's 602. It's 602. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. Um, I also wanted to, before we go for the, for the week, we, um, next week, we're going to be here Tuesday and Wednesday um, only, which is July 7th and 8th, I believe. Um, and then we're going to be taking a break from July 9th um, until we'll be back on July 20th. First, so we've got some internal meetings at the public that Susan and Lori, Susan and Lori, Susan, Lori and I, <laughs> what's happening? happening today. <laughs> Susan Laurie and I have to attend, but we will see you next week and then we'll see you again on July 20th. Okay. Thanks well, everybody. Happy fourth. Enjoy yourselves. Be free. Thank you, Susan Laurie. You're the best. Bye. We love you guys. We do. We love you.